Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with grilled pineapple and prosciutto flatbread. That's right, as you may know, pairing pineapple with ham on a pizza is very controversial. But what's not controversial, and actually a proven scientific fact, is that sweet pineapple pairs perfectly with the salty savoriness of ham. And since there's no sauce or cheese involved, and we're not calling this pizza, I think this is a wonderful way for you to enjoy this pairing without having to worry about an angry mob of food bloggers with torches and pitchforks surrounding your house. And to get started, let me show you a very simple, almost no need method for doing our flatbread dough. And that begins with equal parts of warm water and all-purpose flour, plus one teaspoon of active dry yeast. And then what we'll do is work this over with a whisk for about 30 seconds, or until we have a nice smooth lump-free batter. And by the way, remember not too long ago when there was a big yeast shortage? If God forbid that ever happens again, we don't always have to use the entire package of yeast, especially for a simple flatbread dough like this. So just something to keep in mind when times get tough. And then once mixed, what we'll do is cover this with a towel, and we will let this sit for 30 minutes to give our yeast a nice head start before we uncover it and add the rest of the ingredients, which there are hardly any since this is a very, very simple basic dough. So we'll let that sit for a half hour, after which it's not gonna look a lot different, Although if you look closely, you will see thousands of little tiny bubbles forming. And then to finish this, we'll add a little bit of olive oil. And if you can, when you pour it in, try to form some kind of interesting looking design. And then we definitely also need a little bit of salt, as well as the rest of our flour. At which point I'm gonna grab a spoon and start stirring this. And I'm gonna keep stirring it until it forms what we call in the business a shaggy dough. And yes, in case you're wondering, I do often use a fork for this, or sometimes a wooden spoon, or sometimes I just get right in there with my hand. But anyway, the point is it really doesn't matter. As long as we're able to mix this all together, we're gonna to be fine. And then once our dough gets to this point, we will go ahead and transfer everything to our work surface, where we're gonna give it a very brief kneading with our hand, or hands if you're ambidextrous. And of course, as we do this, we'll wanna pick up any of those loose particles from the counter, which reminds me, this is gonna be a fairly soft and sticky dough, although you're not really gonna notice that stickiness too much, thanks to that tablespoon of olive oil we put in. Okay, that's pretty much gonna prevent it from sticking to our hands or the table. Not to mention, it also makes the dough feel really, really good and fun to work with. In fact, this feels so supple and luxurious. It's a shame we're only gonna need it for like two minutes. But that is all we need, pun intended. And the reason for the brief kneading is because what we'll do is transfer this into a zip top bag into which we drizzled a couple teaspoons of olive oil. And after making sure that dough's coated and we pressed out most of the air and sealed it up, we're going to pop this in the fridge overnight, which is going to allow for a very slow and gentle rise. And besides kneading, gluten, which is the protein in the flour, will also develop and form over time, which long story short is why no-knead bread recipes work so well. So we'll go ahead and pop that in the fridge overnight, and then the next day we can pull it out, and it's probably going to look something like this. And if you're thinking, that sounds great, but I want it today, well, no problem. You can just knead that dough for like five or six minutes until it's nice and elastic and then let it rise covered in a warm spot until it's doubled in size. But anyway, if we're using the overnight method, what we'll want to do is let this cold dough warm up on the counter for about 45 minutes or so. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and prep our pineapple. And to start that, we'll go ahead and cut off the top. And then I'm going to cut this in half. Since that's all I'm going to grill, and I'll save the other half for something else, possibly a banana split ice cream cake, but I cannot confirm that at this point. And then what we'll do is cut around like this, slicing off that skin, which unfortunately is still gonna leave us with those little tough dark eyes here and there, which are kinda of tough, and we really do wanna remove. And I generally just do that with the tip of the knife, just sorta of cutting around and digging them out the best I can. And yes, if you're super lazy, you can just cut more of the skin off, and you won't have as many of those to trim out, but you're gonna lose a lot of sweet, delicious pineapple. And I should mention there are a lot of methods for doing this, where you cut these diagonal channels to get all those at once, but I've never really found one method to be superior to the other. So I just go with the old search and destroy technique. And after a couple minutes, those were all gone. At which point we're gonna to wanna to quarter this and then trim out that tough fibrous core in the center. And the grilling method I like would be to grill these quarters whole and get some nice browning and charring on the surface. After which I'll slice them thin and place that on my flatbread. But if you wanted, you can slice this up first and then grill the individual pieces or rings if you want to cut it that way. But to me, grilling these quarter pieces whole works out the best. 
And that's it. Once those are set, we'll head out to the grill where I have some beautiful hot white ashy coals. And we'll transfer those on with a rounded side down, although it probably doesn't matter. And we will grill these for about three or four minutes per side or until it's hot all the way through and we have some very nice charring. And that rounded, much juicier side with all the holes is not going to char up as easily, but that's okay. We'll just give that side about three minutes or so. And then we'll flip it over to the flatter side, the side that we cut out the core. And that side usually chars up a lot easier and a lot more uniformly. And if everything goes according to plan, this is exactly what we want it to look like. And by the way, two of these should be plenty for the four flatbreads this recipe makes, but I wanted to grill up the other two, since I have it on a very reliable source that this stuff is really good on vanilla ice cream. And that's it, we'll simply set those aside until needed. And by now our dough should have warmed up and continued to rise even more. And what we'll do is remove the dough from the bag and place it on our work surface, at which point we're going to divide this into four portions. And yes, if I had formed this into a ball first, it would have been easier to cut into four equal portions. But that's okay. I am not overly concerned with getting these perfectly even. What is much more important is after we cut these and we roll them into a nice little ball of dough, is that we roll them out into a nice uniform thickness, which is ideally going to be about an eighth of an inch. So no matter what size your portion, or whether you go with an oval or a round or a rectangle, the only critical thing is that we roll these out nice and thin, which as you can see I've done pretty successfully here. And I'm only doing one at this point for filming purposes, but once we have our flatbread dough rolled out, we will head out to the grill. And because our dough is so thin, I find flopping it on top of my hand a very safe and easy way to handle this without tearing it. And we'll go out and we'll place this over those very same coals. And that's it, we're simply going to grill this for about two minutes per side. And while that first side's grilling, you're definitely going to see some bubbles forming. Or at least I hope you do. Since that means our dough was wet enough, and we're going to end up with a beautiful, light, bubbly, chewy texture. So we'll give that first side a couple minutes and then flip it over. And because you're always going to have hot spots on a grill, especially using charcoal, which really, if possible, should be the only thing you use, we're probably going to have to move this around in order to get some nice, even charring. All right, so don't be afraid to observe and adjust and reposition as you see fit. And if you want to flip that back over a time or two, go ahead. That is just you cooking. And as you may have heard me say before, the food gods hate a coward. So don't be afraid to burn this and take it off too early. Okay, that stuff you see that looks like smoke is probably actually steam coming from the inside of the flatbread. And to me, this is not done properly unless about 50% of the surface area is nicely charred, which is pretty much where I was at right here. So we'll go ahead and pull that off and head back inside. And we will move into final production. And the first thing we'll do is drizzle this warm flatbread with a nice drizzle of olive oil, followed by laying over our thinly sliced prosciutto. And in the spirit of full disclosure, I am not using the authentic Parma ham, but rather a very nice and very affordable one from Iowa, which really did work out quite nicely. And almost literally, any salty cured ham will work. And then once we've placed over whatever we think is the perfect amount of that, we will take our beautiful fire-roasted pineapple tenderloin and we'll cut nice thin slices and place that over the top. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want even more grill marks, you can try to grill individual slices of the pineapple, which will work. It just takes a little more effort. But with the charring we have on the outside of this pineapple, combined with the char marks on our flatbread, I think we're going to have the perfect amount of char-grilled smokiness. And that's it. Once our grilled flatbread has been fruited, I'm going to scatter over some fresh herb leaves in the form of sweet, fragrant tarragon. But of course, use the herb of your choice. Okay, some thyme leaves would be beautiful. Or if you're really careful and just use a little bit, some fresh rosemary or chives. And then I'm going to finish mine up with some freshly ground black pepper, as well as one more light drizzle of olive oil. And then last but not least, an optional ingredient that I would consider mandatory and that would be a nice big pinch of flaky sea salt, which is really going to help bring out the sweetness in that pineapple. And that's it. While this thing is still warm, I'm going to go ahead and plate up. And I'll take my pizza wheel and cut it in half. Which, no, does not mean this suddenly becomes a pineapple ham pizza. Take it easy, food bloggers. But no matter what you call this, I'm pretty sure you will agree. This is going to be one of the most delicious things that comes off your grill this summer. Or fall, or winter, or spring. All right, let's not limit ourselves. 
and the combination of our partially charred flatbread with that salty, savory ham, pairing perfectly with that sweet, juicy pineapple, really is extraordinary. Oh, and if you're not into pineapple, this would also be fantastic with grilled peaches, or grilled figs, or even things like apples or pears. So if you want to switch it up, go ahead. I mean, you are, after all, the Dwight Schrute of your meat and fruit. And as long as what you're grilling is fairly sweet, it should work perfectly here. Yes, including probably grilled beets, although I've never tried that. But whether you make this as shown with the pineapple, or you switch the fruit to suit your taste, either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.